G'day and welcome. Uh, Sunday morning, uh, part four of my uh, mid-season player reviews. Um, not much to do on a Sunday morning if you're if you're a Victorian. Uh, well, if you're a, a Metro Victorian with a fucking 25 kilometre travel ban um, on a long weekend. Fuck. Anyway, okay, let's do some uh, let's do some analysis of the next five players on our list. And the first time we skip a couple of players in regards to um, jumper numbers. Uh, we've done 15 players already, number one right through to 15. And we're now gonna have a look at Sam Walsh, uh, Eddie Betts, Lockie Plowman. We also have Jack Martin and Jacob Wiedering. So looking forward to having a look at those five boys. We do skip Jack Carroll wearing the number 16 jumper, first year player from Western Australia, youngest player to be taken in last year's national draft. So he's had some injury concerns. I think maybe a broken thumb. Um, he's just come back, hasn't set the world on fire. Did start the season off quite well in the preseason games, but uh, we look forward to seeing what he's got to offer. I don't think he'll make his debut this year. Don't think he will, but anything's possible in the back half of this season. Um, and the other one, we're all excited about Brady Kemp wearing the number 17 jump up, second year player. A uh, lot of injuries, ACL, missed all of last year. And then, you know, he's had those, uh, I think it was back complaints, uh, which kept him out right up until about two or three weeks back where he made his debut really in the VFL and really impressed. So I think if he's able to keep his body right, we will see him at some time this year. And we're, we're pretty excited about that. But I'm not going to talk about those two boys straight into Sam Walsh. Um, I think this is a great way to start, a real positive way to start. A lot of these, um, a lot of these mid-season reviews so far have been probably on the negative side, um, and it's good to really, you know, be really positive for for a player who who really has just been absolutely outstanding once again. Um, for those of you who are new to this channel. Uh, I do a, uh, a My Blue Heaven MVP, which Sam Walsh won by one vote la last year. Um, came from the clouds and beat Jacob Wiedering. This year, I've decided to include four other voters. So there's five of us. Um, we vote five down to one on a weekly basis. And we have Sam polling in 10 out of the 12 games. And I think he's categorically been the best player for us in eight of those games. Um, simply head and shoulders above everyone else on our list this season. Um, we have him leading that award by 115 votes. 115 votes with 10 games remaining in the season. That That is, that is staggering. Um, and I don't think, uh, I don't think he's that good to be that far in front. Um, he is exceptional. There's no doubt about that. He's a once in a generational player um, in what he's able to do. He's a machine. But seriously, um, and where we should be at um, as a team, there's no way you can tell me a 20 year old should be 115 votes. Um, and I know this is just an award, but I'll tell you one thing if he continues on like this, if the, if the theme of this year is Sam Walsh being that far in front of everyone else, then if we get to best and fairest night, the John Nichols medal, and he doesn't win it in a landslide, if he doesn't win this award in probably the biggest margin that we can remember, um, then not only David Teague and his fucking coaching staff have, have gifted games to players, but fuck their gifting votes as well, because um, he's, been, he's been the standout. As I said, he's a machine. He's super, super consistent. I can only really remember two... So-so games, um, the one against the Western Bulldogs, which is, was a little bit disappointing because we really needed him and and Cripper, um, you know, to really step up late in that game, which they didn't. Um, he wasn't poor by any stretch in that game. And the other one was the Gold Coast game where he only had the 24 touches, both games. So they're, 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 they're his ordinary games, 24 touch games. Um, he's a big ball winner. He wins it in tight. He runs all day. Um, 
You know, he 20 years of age and 51 games under his belt. I mean, it's it's just it's just hard to be critical of him, um, considering the amount of work which he's asked to do. Um, he can he maybe can be a little bit cleaner with his disposal, have a little bit more impact, and hurt the opposition by foot. Um, you know, and I think hopefully in the second half of this year we'll see him hit the scoreboard a little bit more. He's only kicked the five goals so far for the season. Uh, the concerning thing for me um, is that we seem to have come a full circle in, in about five years. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem that long ago that we were we were talking about trying to build a midfielder around a once in a generation or midfielder in Patrick Cripps at the start of this re rebuild. And we're now, you know, five, six years down the track and we're talking about doing exactly the same thing with a 20 year old Sam Walsh. We are just lucky he's still young and we're just lucky he seems to have all the attributes to continue on. Nothing seems to phase this kid. Um, is, he, is he an absolute superstar of the game? Yes, he is. Is he going to be the best player in the game? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, his work rate, as I mentioned, I don't think there's anyone in the competition with a better work rate and a better attitude than this kid. Um, and we're just really lucky to have him. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see what's in store for him, not only in the back half of this season, but moving forward. He's got leadership and captain material written all over him. Whether that comes as early as next year, it probably won't. Um, but I, I, I rest assured, um, he is out of contract at the end of next year. I think it is 222. He comes out of contract. I think I've got that right, which doesn't really concern me, although <laughs> they're going to come after him. I mean, he is, he is a Geelong boy, you know, like he, he's he's from that area. Um, he didn't barrack for the club as a kid, but uh, they'll be right into him. Um, you know, they've got an ageing midfield themselves, and why wouldn't they come after a Sam Walsh? Why wouldn't they? And if we're playing, paying big bucks for, for other players, um, I don't know. Sam Walsh is going to be out of contract shortly and he deserves every bit, every bit and more than what other players on our list are getting currently. Absolute superstar of our football team and the game in general. We're fucking just very, very lucky to have him. Very easy mid-season review to do. Eddie Betts. Um, look, I, I'm, I'm quite happy to admit I got this one wrong. Um... I thought Eddie should have been moved on. Um, I wasn't. <clears throat> I wasn't in the camp of getting Eddie back to the club in the first place, um, you know. And I would have been quite happy for Eddie to retire at the end of last year, or even even being asked just to, you know, to move on. Um, uh, you know, if it, if that meant hanging around the club as a, you know, as an advisor, or an assistant, or a development, whatever that may be, I was I was very comfortable with that. But I thought his best football, and, and look, his best football is behind him, but I thought it was well behind him. Um, I thought he'd left that football back at Adelaide um, and we were really just getting, I suppose, the dregs of, of a really, really uh, damaging small forward. I think for the most part, um, we'd have to be pretty happy about what we've seen so far with Eddie this year. He's looked, li he's looked lively. Um, Soon as he came in, I know he missed. <clears throat> I know he missed the first couple of games, the round one and two games. Um, but soon as he came in, he looked sprightly. Uh, he looked like he was switched on. He's kicked 17 goals from his 10 games. He's been so 17, 13. So he's actually had a lot of shots on goal. We know his ability to to bring others into the game with his goal assists. Um, he's a little bit slow in regards to hitting the scoreboard early. When he came in, he had that, that game against, I think it may have been Port Adelaide, uh, where he kicked four behinds. Uh, but the following week, he kicked three against Essendon, and it's been pretty good since. Um, he's consistently hit the scoreboard. He's slightly off with his conversion, only running at 56% in front of the big sticks. Uh, we know he's not a, a, a big converter from anywhere outside, say, 40 metres. Um, but he's still pretty deadly, you know, within anywhere within 20. Um, look, look, at 35 years of age, we know, well, he's nearly 35, we know his deficiencies. We know that he's probably lost a yard in regards to, uh, you know, harassing, 
and being able to consistently harass the opposition in our front half. Um, I think he's had four games where he hasn't laid a tackle. And I think he's not as good a mark as he was as well. Um, you know, I just think that was an area of his game. Even when he was at Carlton, before he went to Adelaide, he was always strong in the air for his size. Um, but I think from a, you know, from a small forwards point of view, he's enabled us to really put some work into Corey Durden um, at the VFL level. We haven't had to rush him, him in. He's clearly not ready. Um, and it's been a good move. I think it's been one move that's been positive to allow Eddie Betts to have another year. He's not only been okay on the scoreboard, um, but he's also been invaluable for the likes of Harry and also uh, Matt Owings as well. He's really, it looks like, benefited from having Eddie there. Um, who knows what lies ahead for Eddie beyond this year? Who knows, okay? This is a mid-season uh, review, uh, and it's been a, a pretty good tip for mine. Um, we look forward. He's had a nice little break now, a nice little refresher. Hopefully we can get back to Melbourne and stay in Melbourne. I know we have to travel back up to Sydney to play the Giants, but we get back to Melbourne. Um, you can get nice and settled and finish off the season strongly. Um, so it's a, it's a bit of a tick for me, uh, for Eddie Betts in 2021. We go to the number 20, 20 Lockheed Plowman. Um, uh, and yeah, we know, obviously we know the story of Lockheed. Um, you know, he's played the 10 games and missed the last two for his suspension. You know, he was very unlucky. I mean, very unlucky. Um, <laughs> but this might sound a little bit harsh, but I thought he was fucking pretty clumsy, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I, I, I don't know what he was trying to do. And it was it was a classic Lockie Plowman moment as far as I was concerned. It sort of came out of the box, but it just was, it was everything that, I don't know, that, that sort of sums Lockie Plowman up. It, 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 he can do some good things sometimes, but then he can do just the outrageously poor. And this was a combination of both. It was sort of a courageous act, but it was a fucking sort of clumsy act. Um, and he's cost himself two weeks. Uh, and, you know, and at 27 years of age and 120 games under his belt, he should be real. For me, Lockie Plowman, for me at that age in the back half, Lockie Plowman should be really leading the charge from a performance and leadership point of view down back. Um, and he should be nailing his role pretty much to perfection on a week-to-week -week basis consistently. And I don't see that with Lockie. I don't see that. It's too up and down for me. Um, you know, we hear what he's like off the football field. We hear that he's a, you know, he, he's great in the, in the change rooms and, uh, you know, he, he's a great example off the field. But I mean, I base, I base what I see on the field. Um, and, and a lot of the time, I don't like it. Um, the, the game against Collingwood doesn't sit well with me. Everyone can have a bad game, but the body language, the smiling, didn't never sat well with me for a leader of the football club and, uh, you know, someone who should be showing a better example. Um, and, and I just think I want to know what he really offers other than a lockdown player who who a lot of the time doesn't have a lot of aggression or a lot of strength in his game. He's not a physical presence for that position. Um, he's not intimidating. He's a shot for me. For me, he's a pretty ordinary tackler, um, which is a concern. Uh, um, but I suppose the one positive or a positive for me this year is his efficiency by foot has been pretty good. In fact. For me, he's one of the more competent kicks um, from the back half. He kicks short a lot, but he hits targets. Um, we've got him until 2023, I think it is. I think he's contracted to. If I'm going to cut our defenders a bit of slack with the amount of ball that comes down, then I have to cut Lockie Plow on a little bit of slack as well. And if I'm going to cut other defenders some slack in regards to our system, then I'm going to have to cut him some slack as well. So it'd be interesting to see what lies ahead for Lockie Plowman, um, not only in the back half of this season. We know he's going to come back in. We know Teague's going to bring him straight back in. Uh, you know, I heard, you know, if we'd had Lockie Plowman play against, uh, you know, Sydney, he would have played on top Tom Papley and, you know, taken him to the cleaners and he would have been the perfect matchup for Liam Ryan. Let's get one thing straight. Let's get one thing straight. Lockie Plowman didn't play on Liam Ryan last year at Optus Stadium, 
Okay, that was Cade Simpson. Cade Simpson kept Liam Ryan, Ryan goalless last year. Lockie Plowman played on Jack Darling, and Darling played well. Okay, so let's get that straight, all right? He does do good roles, okay, occasionally on players. No doubt about that, all right? and credit where credit's due. But, geez, he does a lot of shit on the field as well. Uh, and I just want to know what lies in store for Lockie Plowman as we move forward. Is it a tick for me this year? No, it's not a tick. It's definitely not a tick uh, as far as Lockie Plowman goes uh, in regards to his form performance and also his leadership down back at 27 years of age with 120 games under his belt. Number 21, Jack Martin. Just frustrating. Um, just really, really frustrating. And we talk about that age, you know, that 26 years of age and, and what we should be getting. And when we were crying out for this, for this sort of sort of void in our in our in our list of, of these blokes right in that that I've called it throughout these reviews that that sweet spot um, where they should be producing their, their most consistent football. You know, and obviously the injury, <coughs> you know, he missed the round one game because of a calf. I think it was a calf, and then we know the PCL injury late in the game against Colin, where I thought he was good with three goals. Um, you know, and then you know, I think he, what, he missed eight weeks, eight weeks before coming back. And he's clearly underdone. He's been clearly underdone. And, and that's a concern that he can come just straight back into the team. Um, is that a lack of faith for the guys below? I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. But we're talking about a performance of an individual, and, and it's those two games, if you're good, if you're good enough to, to cross the white line, then you've got to perform. And I think those two performances against Sydney and West Coast were well below par of a bloke with his ability um, and what he's capable of doing. So do you give him an out in regards to his underdone? I don't know. I, I, I don't because really, at the end of the day, he's on a big contract. He's here into 2024. He's on good fucking money. Uh, and as I said, when you cross that white line, you've got to perform, and he has it. I thought he was outstanding at the start of last year, but it really dropped away. His consistency in the back half of last year's season, and we started to see the little nickel injuries, um, which for me, which for me starts to worry. Um, is he injury prone? Um, are we going to see more of these injuries? Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. I look forward. I look forward to seeing what he's going to have to offer. He's that perfect. He's that perfect forward mid okay so small amounts of time in the midfield um and damaging across half four we know he can be aggressive we know he's a good tackler and we know he's skillful and evasive we know all that and he uses the ball particularly well by foot but we need to get we need to get his body right and we need you know we need to get the best footy out of him and i don't think we've seen the best footy out of jack martin since i suppose about round 10 last year where he, where he came into the club and was outstanding and it's just dropped away um mostly because of his body all right so we need consistency out of jack martin in the second half of this season so it's a look it has to be a slight because he's played those two games but was ordinary was ordinary in, in, in two losses finally jacob weeder in and and to have like sam walsh and jacob weeder in in these two reviews, there's no doubt they're, they're, they're probably the shining lights um, in regards to our, our younger players, although Jacob's now been on the list. I think this is his sixth season and he's played, you know, he's played his hundredth game. Um, he's durable, he's strong, his body, his body is matured. We can see that. Um, he's rarely beaten in one-on-ones. Um, you know, he's, he, He's a very good intercept defender. Um, he's been gi given a little bit more latitude this year to play that game. Um, I don't think he's necessarily been as good as he was last year, but I think he's been pretty good. Um, he had one really outstanding game where he was head and shoulders about anyone else, um, probably on the ground, although we were defeated, and that was the Western Bulldogs game where he took seven contested marks. I thought he was absolutely outstanding in that game. It was just a man mountain. And then we saw the game against Melbourne where <clears throat> it was just a bad matchup. Tom McDonald turned the game on its head in the first half, um, just completely ran him all over the park and he just couldn't go with him. Um, you know, I, I, I just think, I just think 
Jay Gibbs, the, 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 I don't know, I, I'd feel for him. I feel for him and Liam Jones. And a lot of time I feel for a lot of our defenders because we leak, we leak so many inside 50s. So it's hard to judge them. We judge our defence very hard. Um, so a lot of it, I think, is about not only the system throughout the midfield and that defensive pressure and the way we set up behind the ball, etc. But, you know, I don't know. I, I just feel that he needs – he's he's the perfect player, I think, because he hasn't got great league, league speed. If the ball's coming in too easily, he can get found out and he won't be the only one. Um, I, I think it's been a pretty good year and I just – I sometimes I wonder with, with Jacob Weedering, what would he be like? Because I look at Lockie Henderson – and the way Lockie Henderson is playing at the moment at Geelong, um, and he's just been outstanding. And I think, I think Jacob Weeder is a lot better football than Lockie Henderson. And I just think, what would fucking Lockie? I mean, what would Jacob Weeder be like in Geelong's team right now, and how good he would be? And he would be your 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 all Australian centre half back. Um, and that for me, I, I just wish I just wish we were stronger and, and we're missing out. I think mean, we're gonna see better, you know, we're gonna see the best of Jacob Weedering in the next few years, there's no doubt about that. But we these years we're missing out. We we we're not making the most of of a player like Jacob Weedering, and, and and that's really disappointing for me. Um and sometimes I think he loses a little bit of confidence, gets sort of lazy with his kicks because I, things are falling apart and I don't know. I don't know. Is he captain material? Could he take over the? That, that's a question I'll ask you guys. Um, you know, if, if we got question marks on on Cripper and and um, and Doc in regards to to captaincy and whether the club want to make a move on that, is is Jacob Weedering the next man? Um, I think he could be. Uh, I think he could be. I think it'd be great for him. He's right at the perfect age. Um, he's a great player. Like he's a really good player. Um, but as I said, it's just disappointing that um, he's just playing in a really poor side at the moment. A really poor side, and I, I find that I find that really disappointing for him um, because we're not getting we're not getting the best out of of how good he is right here, right now. So they're the next five players. So tell me what you think. Tell me what you think, Sam Walsh. Eddie Beats, Lockie Plowman, Jack Martin, and Jacob Wiedering. That's part four of my mid-season player reviews. I'll be back tomorrow, guys, with part five. 35 players on the list who've played a game in 2021. They're the guys that I'll be re reviewing. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow.